Hello. Hope you're all doing great. So it's calling my micro system. I'm back again with another video. So it's been a while since I recorded a tutorial. And um yeah, right now I think I'm back. So y'all can subscribe, like my videos because when uh for the next few weeks or for the next coming weeks we're going to do um, a lot of recordings and then we're gonna make some tutorials so we need to do this we need to do this so you all can learn um, from all the videos so well a lot has happened and a lot has happened since the last time I recorded I was uh, got busy a little I moved so I could keep on recording so we're like we need to increase the subscriber base and uh, and we need to also do more recordings so wow anyway let's get to it so today we're going to look at a digital clock yeah a digital clock so we're going to build a digital clock from scratch so what i mean by that is we are not going to use any screens, any auxiliary screens like LCDs or OLED screens. So we're basically just going to use um, the Arduino Zero monitor. So, okay, this is how we're going to do it. Let's start by, by yeah, let's start, let's begin, let's begin. So for starters, we're going to start with the loops. Yeah, because mainly what a clock need is a loop. I mean, it counts from like the way it works. It says it counts the seconds, counts up to sixty, and then a minute up updates. So a minute has to wait for sixty iterations of seconds variable. Then an hour has to wait for sixty iterations for of the minute variable. So it all starts with the seconds yes okay let me show you how what i mean by that so we're going to start by doing some iterations so what we do okay okay guys i'm using walkway here so you can go to walkway.com it's like an online simulator so i don't need to do like physical wiring and all that stuff but uh i can you can also do that but it's good for practicing so serial begin let's begin at nine nine thousand six hundred baud so that means bits right uh, bits per second and then we're going to do a loop here so you see how the variable increments systemically so seconds let me declare seconds i'm declaring it as an integer of course because there's no floating point values what I mean by that is decimal points. So yeah, let's do this. So to increment a value by one, you can simply do this, seconds plus plus, or seconds, seconds plus one. Okay, these are basically on line 11 and line 12 are basically the same things. So, okay, that's too long. So this is the short form for like adding one to that variable so right now its default has been set to zero so that means zero is stored in the seconds and uh yeah so basically that's it so let's print out the seconds bit so we want to do like serial do print line and uh print seconds there let's see what's happening Okay, so that's how you find it. Okay. So things are going too fast, so we don't see what's up. So let's delay because seconds delay with 100, 1000 seconds, 1000 milliseconds. So 1000 milliseconds makes one second. So Arduino has a timer and it's set to second uh, to milliseconds so 1000 milliseconds is one second so you see how it increments like that nicely so yeah basically that's that's what's up yeah 
Okay, one second. Yeah, so yeah, that's it. So, so on building a clock, the seconds counts up to 60 and then something else happens. The minute variable increments by one if it comes up to 60 seconds. So let's create the minute variable. So variable set to zero. So let's try this. Because we are incrementing it, so we're going to implement to check if the seconds is equal to 60. We're going to use an if statement. Seconds if so that's how we do if statement. You check if seconds is equals to 60. But remember we're using the two to double equal sign. The single equal sign means assignment operator, but to do an equal sign, you have to do a double to to do like uh, if you want to check the equality, use the two dot the two equal signs, of course. So so we're going to check if seconds is equal to sixty. Okay. So I uh, minutes like that. If seconds equals to sixty minutes plus plus. So this means minutes will be incremented by one. Okay. So if seconds is equals to the sixty minutes is going to be incremented by one. So And then we're gonna need to print out the minutes. So currently, let's make things a little bit cleaner. So print, because we want to show here the seconds and then we want to show the minutes as well. Seconds like that. And then we're gonna need to print the minutes as well. So, uh, let's use it. So serial print it's like that and then let's oh yeah we're working server line instead of serial okay so sure print line because now I'm printing out the variable which is minutes here so yeah and then you don't forget the same columns because I've been doing a lot of Python lately and I'm currently getting the same columns. So yeah, let's do this. See that how nice it is. So now I have seconds and then the semicolon and then the variable itself. So this is the variable itself that's being printed out. And uh, you notice that this one I use print and then this one I use print line. So that means seconds and this first line and the second line are going to be like concatenated like they are joined so it looks nicely in one line if i do something like that print line on both lines you see how it's printing but i wanted it to be on one line so yeah yeah like that that's how i want it so let's check if the um, if it reaches um 60 uh huh it's going to point out okay it's 15 16. Mm -hmm. so yeah that's how we that's how you do it so we're going to check if it reaches 60 once it does we increment the minutes you see right now it's not even printing minutes so it should print minutes as soon as it reaches 60. So yeah, we last less than, less than 20 seconds. So that's how we do it. Anyway, just to do a recap, six seconds, minutes, declare the variable. If I don't declare the variable, there's no way I'm going to store the values. So, okay. Mm -hmm. It's almost four seconds, three, two, one. Yeah, see that? So it's going to print minutes. But there's a problem here. Um, 
the seconds is getting out of control and it's going to 61 62 63 i mean that's not time right it's not supposed to be um past 60 so hmm, how are you going to solve that because it's not supposed to print like 84 seconds and all that so we need to stop that from happening so what we're going to do is once as soon as seconds reaches 60 we set it to zero okay so it's going to reset the seconds variable to zero and then as soon as that happens so it's going to start from one again okay because right now it's it's going out of control and that's now how digital clocks operate as soon as it reaches 60 it resets to zero great so yeah okay the next thing we're going to do as that point counts so okay let me do because 60 seconds is way too much time so let's do it like you know, let's try let's work with 20 seconds or oh, 10 yeah. you can always change it to 60 so just for testing purposes so we're going to see if it reaches 10 with uh, the, the minutes i'm going to increment so i'm using 10 just for testing but it's supposed to be 60 you see that minutes of increment so let's see if if it's going to mean it's going to be two there's not and uh, it's reset seconds to see that and then as soon as it reaches 10 which is supposed to be 60 minutes are incrementing okay so that's based, that's the behavior that we want and then as soon as it reaches like 60 here minutes you know i'm just using 10 here for as an example because i don't want to wait 60 seconds so i'm just setting up um for, for like 10 seconds so what's important is this is the void loop and this is where all the loops are. okay this is the void loop here this is where all the magic happens of the of incrementing so it's looping it's looping it's looping so this is the main increment that's setting everything into motion so you set cans it's going to count when it reaches 60 minutes are going to increment and all that okay so that's basically it then let's try and implement hours as well so now i think now you get the idea and uh you can implement hours pretty easily right now i guess yeah um yeah, i think now it's pretty easy to implement hours as well so yeah let's implement hours so what we can do here we just copy this line because the next thing we're going to check is minutes Okay, so and then just replace here the minutes it's supposed to be 60. But um yeah, that's supposed to be 60. Uh, if minutes supposed to be 60, we are going to reset the minutes variable to zero, the same way we did with seconds, and then we're going to increment the hours variable by one. So that means if it's 60 60 minutes this of course is equals to one hour so yeah let's do hour i don't know i haven't declared the hours variable yet so um, let me declare it up here so hours like that so uh-huh so I mean, you know, I mean, there's no you can wait for 60 minutes, so let's just use like a lesson number, like uh, like two, and then we're going to see if this one works. Because if it does, that means even if I set 20 hit, uh, like 60 minutes, it's, it's, it's going to increment anyway. So, yeah, let's refresh it, and then let's count. Of course, we're going to wait for like two minutes and then the hour variable will update. Okay. And then minutes is one. Seconds, seconds are incrementing and then it's resetting. Mm -hmm. You see, now the hour is also updating. Okay. The hour is also updating. Great. So that's awesome.
the R will update. Great, yeah. So everything working correctly. So um I was thinking maybe if I could like arrange everything nicely. Yeah, so they 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 all appear in one line, kind of like that. So I don't know. I could start with um hours, and then minutes, and then seconds. So yeah. So yeah, I think basically let's do sixty seconds. And then 60 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, um, how am I going to arrange it? Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, because I'm using a serial monitor, so I'm extremely limited by what I can do. But um, I, think, I hope you get the idea. Serial print. Uh, let's try and put some spaces here. What I can try and do is uh, use a tab. So, okay. Print line, print, a tab character. Like that, so that it all prints on the same line. I'm just going to separate them with a tab. You'll see how it works more. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Oh God, I'm used to, I've been doing a lot of Python lately, so please forgive me for not adding the semicolons. Okay, uh -huh. yeah, of course, this one. I don't know if I forgot one, okay. Hmm. Let's see if the tabs are working. By that, I mean, let's use a lesser time. Like, like three and then it's going to move quickly like after three seconds we're going to see minutes oh boy it's not working but uh, i think it'll be a nice assignment i want them to be arranged like this and uh up to that point i think we have like a basic of what a digital clock should look like and uh the next video i'm planning on using an oled screen Putting everything nicely on an OLED slip, OLED screen so that it looks like a a wristwatch, like a digital wristwatch. So, guys, I appeal to you to subscribe to my channel and uh, let's move forward. Uh, looking forward to nice engagement. If you have any questions, you can just leave them in the comment below. I'll set up an email so in case anyone has a question. You can always ask and then I will always be there to reply. Great. So until next time, have a good day. Thank you.